A man known as Wolf commanded the Shadow Tower for a little over four years after the tragic death of Sir Dennis Malister. Wolf was a proud volunteer at the age of 16, and he quickly made a name for himself after proving to be a skilled warrior. He gained a reputation over the years thanks to his hard work, and was an easy first choice for a commanding role despite the air of mystery around him. He never spoke of his family or where he came from. Even in his late forties, Wolf is someone you don't pick a fight with. Not only is he a fearsome warrior, but he is also well respected. Rumours reached Wolf that Mance Raider, a king beyond the wall unlike any other kings beyond the wall, was preparing to invade Castle Black. On top of this, news came quickly to Wolf's ears that the Weepers, a fearsome wildling band, was heading towards the gorge. Wolf gathered as many brothers as he could spare to fight off the wildling assault. The brothers saw the Weepers' brutality firsthand. They had beheaded several scouts of the Night's Watch, lowering the morale of the already tired group. The battle was fierce. The wildlings fought more with their bodies than with their speed or skill. The Weepers crashed into the Brothers of the Black, slaying many in the charge. However, the battle turned against them in a prolonged fight thanks to the valour of Wolf and his company. Suffering heavy losses, Wolf and his men were victorious. It wasn't long after the battle that a raven from Castle Black arrived, demanding help in the tunnels under the wall. Wolf, battered and bruised, marched his remaining brothers to the tunnel to face an overwhelming force. Another wildling tribe, even fiercer than the previous. The battle lasted for hours. Screams echoed through the tunnels and the walls were smattered with blood. But the men of the Night's Watch snatched victory from the hands of the savages. The cost was great though. The Night's Watch had lost more than half of their original force, and the worst was yet to come. The legendary horn of Mance Raider could be heard as shards of ice began to fall from the wall, crashing down around Castle Black. Before ordering a full retreat, Maester Aemon gave one last rousing speech and made Wolf the last Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. After a few hours, Wolf and the remaining men of the Watch made it safely inland, Wolf watched the wall in the distance slowly crashing down. Soon after, thousands of wildlings poured through the wreckage. The king beyond the wall had started his invasion. Mance's army marched from castle to castle, taking the north by surprise at every turn. Lord Commander Wolf rallied the remaining loyal brothers, those that still held their oath sacred, and with them kindled a last glimmer of hope. Hello and welcome back to A Clash of Kings, guys. This is the new series. We're on version 2.2 .2 of the mod. And again, I want to say a huge thanks to Officially Devon for his amazing, amazing voice narration for the introduction. It was absolutely amazing. You can find his channel in the description. Anyway, so after gathering more men, Wolf's first act was to retake Molestown and use it as a safe hold. The Wildlings were drunk and unprepared, and the Brothers of the Night's Watch had no issue in slaughtering them down. After a night's rest, Wolf gathered every man he had and headed towards the last half. Scouts reported little movement in the castle, and guessed that the castle had a small garrison. Wolf charged towards the castle with his brothers. The wildling garrison also charged. I guess they've never really been in the castle, let alone defend it. After several minutes, the small garrison were put down, and the black flag of the Night's Watch waved in the icy cold wind. Now that Wolf has a castle, he would now start to gather more men and prepare for what comes next.
So if you would like to have the Night's Watch faction in your playthrough, there will be a download link in the description which basically replaces the Cell Sword faction and basically turns them into the into the Night's Watch faction which I have created as well as my friend Spree who helped make the troop tree. And uh, now it may not be completely accurate to the books, but this is how I've made it and if you want it it's there. And also, if you want to play around with it and mess around with it, mess around with it yourself, you can using the morphs editor tool or whatever you want to use. But yeah, it's there in the description if you want to use it. Anyway, so after taking out the castle, Wolf took out a small squad to take out some wildling scout parties and foraging parties, which they got lots of supplies from. They also gathered a few prisoners, which were northerner troops, which were fighting now for their cause, which was quite nice, of course. So after a long day of killing wildlings, uh, Wolf set camp and was ambushed by a big wildling army. Well, not big, but bigger than anything he's faced so far. And this was an, an army led by a wildling chieftain. This was Wolf's first real test at fighting on the open field, as he's only been really used to fighting on the wall. Wolf set up his archers on a small hill and then spread his infantry out just in front. The Wildling army charged with full force starting off with their cavalry. Wolf only having one mounted unit and that being himself, rode around and sliced them all in half. But that was the easy part, after he defeated the cavalry he would have to fight the full force of the Wildling infantry. After a few convincing wins, Wolf headed back to the last half to rest and gather more troops. He hired his castellan to train more troops and hire more men from the local area. After a few days, scouts reported that Mance had set out a small army to take back last half. It wasn't their full army, luckily, as they were focused on other parts of the north. Wolf was heavily outnumbered, but had a plan. As long as the wildlings didn't breach the walls, he had a chance. He was aware of how good they were at climbing walls, and didn't want them to get anywhere near it. So he stationed all of his archers on top of the walls and his infantry just below. The first wave of wildlings charged towards the castle. Wolf intercepted them with his men, and had a brutal battle on the field. After fighting for a long time, Wolf finally defeats the first wave of the Wildling invaders and decides to pull his men back to the walls. From here, Wolf would rely on his archers to shoot down what was left of the Wildling army. Wave after wave, the Wildlings failed to breach the walls. Their lack of armour and discipline was easy work for Wolf's archers as they picked them off one by one. Eventually, the horns echoed in the mist and the Wildling army retreated. The brothers of the Night's Watch celebrated yet again another great victory, but not Wolf. Wolf knew this was just the beginning. The next day, scouts reported that the retreating army was heading towards Grey Edge, a village now under Wolf's protection. Wolf gathered every man he could and headed towards the village. The raiding had only just begun. Wolf prepared his men for battle. 
the wilding force charged with full force. Wolf knew his men were tired from travelling, but had little choice. He drew his sword and led the charge. Well that's all we've got time for today guys, I hope you enjoyed the first episode, future episodes will be longer and will be less edited and more like a let's play, but for now I just wanted to get the story going and I hope you enjoyed it. Again guys, a huge thanks to Officially Devon and my friends for help helping me set up this series. It was uh, a lot of fun to make, it, took a, it, it did take its time and I know, I know you guys have been very patient for this series and I do hope you guys do enjoy it. Uh, episodes will be going up daily, hopefully. Uh, see how it goes. And yeah, guys, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.